you're watching Keeping It Green. I'm your host, Debbie Klugers, and today we are going to be talking about fish farming on Long Island with Mr. Bob Link. Welcome to Keeping It Green. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. My I appreciate pleasure. your time. Thank you. Thanks for the long drive that you took to get here. <laughs> oh, that wasn't a problem. Oh, good. I was only afraid of getting lost. Oh, <laughs> that didn't happen. It didn't happen. Good. Not today. Good. <laughs> now you know your way here. You can uh, come out. Anytime Welcome. you invite me. Good. Thank you. And you're involved with the multiculture aquaculture systems. Multi, multi aquaculture systems, systems, yes. Out in Amagansett. Mm -hmm. And do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and the facility that you're sure. working uh, with? The or? facility, we'll do that first. Okay. Because that's a little more exciting than me. <laughs> the facility has been there for 34 years. It is run by Dr. Robert Valente and Dr. Marie Valente. Um, they have been growing and handling uh, fish uh, for, like I said, 34 years. Mm -hmm. um, they buy uh, fish, live fish, from the commercial fishermen, and then they uh, prepare it for sale to various wholesalers and it goes all around the world, live lobster, live cod, um, live fluke. Mm -hmm. um, and they've done very, very well at this. Obviously, if you're in business 34 years, right. you know, you, you had to do something right. And they're now involved in uh, growing fish offshore um, in a site that was permitted 12 years ago to grow fluke, and they're in the process of uh, arranging to have it grow striped bass starting uh, late this summer and then going uh, thereafter and putting that fish into the mix that they uh, already have to address the wholesale markets that already exist. Great. So um, it's aquaculture, mariculture on Long Island. We're going to be uh, farming striped bass. Yes, These pure striped bass, State, not hybrid. New York State uh, saltwater fish, the state Yes. For water fish of New York. Mm -hmm. And um, you're going to, you said pure striped bass, not the hybrid. Not so hybrid. you're going to be bringing in babies into the pens? How are you going to oh. do this? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to uh, get wild striped bass, uh, turn the lights down, raise the temperature. Mm -hmm. Little music. <laughs> little music, <laughs> and uh, the eggs will fertilize. Do you have to uh, do that at a certain time of year? Yes. Okay, with yes. Their, coincide with their spawning and all yes. that? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and doctors, Belentes, um, you know, know exactly how to do that. And then... Um, you know, I just want to step back a second. Other farm-raised um, striped bass in the country are hybrids. Yes. That they're a mix of white bass and striped bass. And striped bass. But mm -hmm. the bass that we're going to be farming here on Long Island are... are Pure. That's great. Mm -hmm. So there's no issues with uh, if any of these guys escape their pens that they're going to... You know, the hybrids are going to get into the, the population and do well, damage. Well, there'll be no hybrids. So they right, they right. right. So there's right. no environmental problem no, with that. No, no environmental problem. Good. They'll be taking eggs from wild striped bass. Right. So, um, do those fish get put back, or do you uh, no, cook them up for dinner after they well, you can have supply them for dinner. you with yeah. the eggs? <laughs> <laughs> um, you can have them for dinner if you want them. Uh, we, they're the, uh, the marine biologists and pathologists, and... Um, uh, you know, I don't know how many uh, times they can strip them for okay. eggs and sperm, but, you know, they'll know. And if mm -hmm. it's one time, it's one time. Mm -hmm. And if it's two times, it's two times. And, you know, uh, that's something that I don't get involved okay. in. <laughs> so they get the, uh, the larva, they, they hatch it out, mm -hmm. and they rear it a bit in the facility? In the facility okay. there, uh, because they start out in fresh water. Right. And then uh, they get saltified at a certain time, and then they'll go into salt water, and they'll go out to the site, um, and, the, and the net pens out there. You wanna? We have a video that we could watch to check yeah, out the yeah, site. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and um, till they bring that up, how old are they about when you put them out into the pens? I honestly don't know. Hmm. Um, six months, I guess. Okay. Eight months. It goes by here's, size. Here's the site. This is out in Gardner's Bay? This was, yes, this was the permitted site out in Gardner's Bay. Just These, a little south of Plum Island? Just uh, about 1,500, 1,800 feet south of Plum Island. And what are we seeing here? You're seeing the uh, uh, 
two net pens, and those two net pens are identical to the net pens we're going to be putting back, actually in the same spot. And um, uh, as, you, as you can see, it might not look that way, but they're 50 meter pens, so they're quite large. Okay. Um, I guess they're around a, a fifth or a quarter of an acre each. Each of those pens? Each of those pens. Wow. Mm -hmm. And they'll hold, each pen will hold about 25,000 um, striped bass. Wow. And does that go right to the floor of the bay? No, it's uh, 17, uh, 10 feet off. The water there is about 32 feet deep, and it's 10 feet off by permit restriction okay. off the bottom. Hmm. Interesting. So they'll go in there and they'll grow for a couple of years? Um, no, six months. Six months, and then they're yep. ready for market. Right, they'll be about a pound, and about a pound, a pound and a half. Wow. Um, and then they'll go into the market. So this fish farming doesn't have to adhere to the regulations of uh, recreational um, striped bass, you know, when we catch them? You're talking about size limits? Yes, yeah, size No, because limits. they're grown, they okay. would be tagged. Okay. They would be tagged, and it would be under... Uh, uh, there's a license number, it's called LUW119, which is Lands Underwater 119, okay. which is the license number from Office of General Services, who owns all the waters in New York. And that's uh, where multi-aquaculture got the lease from. Hmm. Interesting. So, um, what do you feed the, the stripers out there? What are we going to feed the fish? It's a, a protein diet, it would be a dry pellet diet. Um, I'm not quite sure exactly what the, the protein content is compared to the ash and, and everything else that goes into it, but it's, it's a commercial diet uh, that has been used for other fish. Uh, uh, Dr. Valente will uh, make sure that it meets the dietary requirements mm -hmm. of the fish. Um, like stripers are a game fish, and they tend mm -hmm. to like to go after moving uh, bait and such. Do mm -hmm. these fish acclimate easily to eating this type of diet? They'll or? acclimate to it when they're in the pools on land. Okay, so, so they, that's right. what they're used to. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so when they get into the pens in, in the ocean, um, you know, when the, the feed comes, uh, they'll be very similar to Pavlov's dogs. And, you know, when the boat hits the, uh, the net pen, they'll know that they're about to get fed, and then they'll get excited, and, you know, and they're then we'll broadcast eating. the feed. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have people going out, uh, feeding the fish, yes. taking care of them? Oh, yeah. Security? Yeah, mm -hmm. all of the above. Great. Good full-time jobs. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yes. And we were talking earlier, and you were telling me how um, the fishing industry worldwide is the largest employer in, in the world. Yeah, more than all the military and everything. There's wow. 400 or 500 million people involved in the fishing industry. Wow. I mean, it's, you know, people don't consider it, but, you know, uh, why everything was built up along the coast was years ago, uh, that's where they got their protein. Right. Uh, fish is the number one consumed protein in the world. Uh, more than beef, and chicken, goats, mm -hmm. uh, pigs combined. And especially in developing countries. Especially in developing countries. Um, the seafood, interestingly enough, the number one import into the U.S. is um, oil. Number two is seafood. Wow. So um, <laughs> people don't realize that. And, mm -hmm. You know, it's just, it's you know, number two. How did that happen? Yeah, that's it's, huge. Yeah, because we don't have that much of our own. So um, most of our seafood comes from someplace else. And, you know, bringing that up, um, people can make um, wise decisions on the types of seafood that they purchase, um, sustainable seafood. Mm -hmm. And um, the Monterey Bay Aquarium, uh, if you go to MontereyBayAquarium.org, they have this nice little seafood watch mm -hmm. that people can get, and it um, it tells you, you know, how to make better choices, uh, best choices, good alternatives, and to avoid, you know, and um, striped bass is on one of the um, best choices mm -hmm. um, to make, whether it be farmed or wild caught. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, things to avoid.